My job is to, uh, I'm the CTO of the Western Central African Network, WACREN. I was, and my job is to make the network, the, build the network that we're, like, we, a project we're involved in, and more importantly, you know, deploy services on this network. So, um, so starting from scratch means you have an opportunity to do it right if, you, if the approach is correct. So it was very important for us that, you know, we sort of connected with the right people, and SciGuy has proven very useful in sort of moving our thoughts and thinking about how we will do it forward. This is the usual, you know, European Union supported projects of fact information. So we actually started this project at the same time as SciGuy, so we're about ending as well. So the final conference, you're going to have a final conference like this next week in Abidjan, uh, same sort of period. Quite a few partners, some of them in Saigaya as well as in Tandem, as you can see. Anyway, so Tandem, the purpose of this project was to sort of support the dialogue between African NRENs and Euro NRENs, but there's a particular focus on Western Central Africa. Don't forget, we were the new kids on the block, and that was the intent. The project had three main approaches. One was that it was going to try and talk to people so, and people on different levels. It was going to look at, you know, <coughs> policy makers, donors, and people who would sustain us financially and see if we could find a construct to look for us that would sustain Wakren as it has sort of evolved. It was going to look at, uh, talk to NRENs and try and understand what the needs were so that when we sort of came up with a roadmap for services, it was applicable to their needs and not one that we invented. And it was going to try and create a conversation amongst our membership, so the countries and within the countries. So the idea was, Wakran is new, get this, get this all moving on. So that's pretty much what I was trying to describe with the PODWAG. PODWAG is a group we formed uh, about with those government stakeholders, some international donors, and decision makers from across the region. The idea was that if we got all these people into some sort of group and they were talking about how to sustain us, then we could leverage some of the synergies that exist that they, they were not, might not even be aware of. And that has been actually very successful. Now, in the Africa Connect 2 project, it's a 12.5 million euro project, but Wakren was expected to bring up 20%. Now, 20% might seem small until you try and get it. So 2.5 million euros is a lot of money to go out looking for in my region because nobody has the money and the governments were not providing it. But in any case, that's what the uh, PODWAG was going to do. They were going to look at giving us some recommendations on policy, finance, and regulatory issues. And when we were going to take that, raise some awareness, and feed that back in the way the cycles are described. Now, from the community point of view, we we're looking at, within the NREN, some forget, what, it wasn't just Wakren that was new. Even our members, in some cases, our members were just an organization in name only. So you didn't have any real structure. So we had to build that structure. So one of the, so that, the, the idea, the way we looked at uh, managing that was to get this NREN representatives into some sort of group where we could basically mentor them and build them out. And, and one approach was to get in every NREN to get somebody who was responsible for communication. So Wakren could communicate with that person, and that person would communicate within their country. So, and then we're looking at three thematic uh, communities, you know, that we were going to use as an example. And there was a bit of about a platform in which that we would work with all those people. Now this worked, but not very well. And that's, again, Saigaya was a, the was a problem. So when SciGuy started bringing the services for us, our first port of call was the NREN focal point. So we'll go to the NREN focal point and say, hey, here's an open access repository. Excellent for your country. But then the NREN focal points didn't have a button. They were there and it's fine. They could use a mailing list, but mailing lists were not sufficient. So that sort of evolved. I'll talk about that as we go on. Anyway, this is where basic description for the focal points. So they were selected within their NRENs, like I said, to liaise with their country, 
and sort of feedback to work run. We had some criteria for the sort of people who will be in RAIN focal point. They had to be either researchers or well known within the community. Uh, but like I said, that didn't work as well as we thought. Again, it was the distance. This is what they intended, we wanted them to do. I've described this, so we don't have to talk too much about that. When we rec recognized that there was an issue with um, disseminating information through the focal points, we created this additional layer, and this layer was a focal point in the institutions in the country. So if, if you say, if you took South Africa, for instance, we would have a South African NREN focal point at the country level, but in every institution in the country, there will be a focal point network of these focal points in institutions which relayed information to the national focal point to work in and back. So that meant that if I wanted to send something or I wanted to create a product or a service and I wanted to disseminate that, we would contact the NREN focal point who would have a network of focal points he could relay that to and vice versa. If there were needs from the campus level, they would come back through the energy focal point and come to work. So when we got this structure, it's not fully in place, but when we started to look at this structure, uh, it started to happen. So if I was going to take a very rough example, you've seen Professor Ribis Hala's presentation. So in the context, if I was going to draw some similarities, Professor Ribis Hala is the institutional focal point. A co-connect the organization he said introduced Sai Gaia to him could have been the national focal point. Now, once, now that we've established that relationship, it becomes a funnel, a bi-directional funnel, so we push things down, it can push things back up. There was the other last pillar about services. So the way we're going to approach that, we ran some workshops on national level in some countries, uh, and we ran a survey. That was the real, I suppose, highlight of this work package, because the survey now gave us some insight. It was a very successful survey. Uh, I don't think we've done anything that, that you know, expansive re in recent times. It was a very successful survey. There was lots of response. The focal points were actually very useful in this survey, because the focal points were able to get the survey uh, to respondents in their communities. So we got, that's why that, that's why that was quite successful. But what was most important about the survey was that it gave us insight into the real needs. Now, I've listened to the South African presentations, and I'm seeing all that data and the history of computing. My environment doesn't have that kind of structure. So it's not the same problem. So if I'd listened to, uh, I've forgotten what the Indian man's the guy's name is, Anwar. If I listened to Anwar, Right? And on the back of his presentation, which was excellent, um, I could really you know, connect with that, and said, OK, I was going to take that back to my region. I would not have the results that the expected results. So the survey was very helpful in defining the roadmap, the portfolio of services that we are going to be offering and we're starting to offer. So I'm just going to list some of them. So basically, we came up with this. Those in bold. And in between them are all Saigaya related. So I don't need to tell you how much impact Saigaya has had on the way we're going to be moving forward. So primarily, we're going to take everything Saigaya has produced the training, uh, the methods, the open access repository. Half the people in my region don't have the capacity. When I say half the people, that really sounds very wrong. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the organizations don't have the technical capacity like everywhere else. So the fact that we can take virtual machines that are already prepared, or we can, we, are, we have sort of picked up on uh, all the AI. We have, I think we're, now we're three federations, I think, in Africa. I could put hand on chest, I can say that we got work on ID running before you got Sapphire going, you know. So that was Saigaya. So it's another, another part of the impact. One of the things we've been, I was discussing with Chris and Guy before he left about the IDP in the cloud, we have a different view of how we will build out this identity federation. So we are going full mesh, but we have the code from Saigaya, we have experiences from uh, 
car. So that's the way we'll be going. So all of this is really what the roadmap for our services uh, for Workgren's immediate future is looking like. What I was saying earlier on to somebody in, over lunch, what we now found was that all of these great, nice things have created a new problem for us. It's nice to be able to deploy virtual machines. It's nice to be able to deploy all the technical stuff. But you still need to be able to get people to understand this, connect it to their workflows, and actually use it. So we, we realize there's a gap in the process. So we have the tools now. We, we know what to do about the tools. But we have a challenge on the human side. And then all the open science, open access, open data needs information expertise. So we looked around again and thought to ourselves, you know, we already have this model where the focal points have a lower hierarchy. So what we're going to do, we're going to sort of look at exploiting the institutional focal points uh, in a way we could sort of build capacity uh, with information expertise in the region. So well, librarians are your typical information experts. So that we have decided to focus on building that capacity within that focal point model. So that's so the question then became, how do we sustainably develop these librarians who largely are not so in tune with this whole digital infrastructure to support their users? Because they are closest you know, the, within the community, the librarian's mandatory or sort of traditional role connects to all the end users, researchers and whatnot. So we're in the middle of that. So what we decided to do uh, to make what we're going to take from SciGaia really useful is a, a formal program to actually build capacity in libraries. So this is what we'll be doing. We have started out with a research agenda with the University of uh, Sheffield, where basically another survey. The bits we missed out in the SciGaia survey, sorry, I beg your pardon, in the tandem survey. I think I'm saying too much SciGaia now. Uh, in the tandem survey, because in the tandem survey, we hadn't really focused on these aspects. So we're going to take this as a start and basically understand what the challenges are for our librarians to scale our librarians up to be able to do some of this. So we have sort of plans. We want our librarians to be able to take their communities and, you know, in some very clear drive, make sure they all have ORC IDs, for instance. And when they all have ORC IDs, use that, introduce that in some form in their workflow to automate, you know, population of these open access repositories. And then if we connect that with them, um, if we connect that with identity federations and the elements of the open science platform, we think we should be able to build some sort of, um, at least get ahead very quickly.